anger that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. The Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, from man to animals to creeping things and to birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time. Noah walked with God. Noah became the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God, and the earth was filled with violence. God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. Then God said to Noah, To the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them, and behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. You shall make the ark with rooms, and shall cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you, should make, how you shall make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits, its breadth, 50 cubits, and its height, 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark, and finish it to the cubit from the top, and set the door of the ark in the side of it. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. Behold, I, even I, am bringing the flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life from under heaven. Everything that is upon the earth shall perish. One final thing. But I shall establish my covenant with you, and you shall enter the ark, and you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. So this was a pretty um, <laughs> incredible rendition of the deciphering of what was actually, it was all one conglomerate, one being, and, um, okay, hold on, Sash wants to say something. No, go ahead, finish your sentence, yeah. Okay. It was um, a conglomeration of what Enki said and Enlo said, and it turned into this mishmash. It's kind of like that, you know, when you whisper something in, an, in somebody's ear and you go around the room and what, what does it end up uh, sounding like on the other side? This uh, is not anything like what originally happened. So back to Dr. Lesson. Okay, so since Jim has, has brought this uh, way later creation, Enlil, uh, after lots of history that we're going to give you in great detail, uh, winds up have, calling himself Yahweh. And uh, and then long after his uh, the temple uh, to Yahweh in Jerusalem is destroyed and the uh, it, the principal inhabitants are um, exiled to Babylon, then they they uh, try to create a propaganda uh, instrument, the Bible, the Old Testament, that would uh, say there was only one God and that was Enlil and not. Uh, Enki, and but we know that Enki, uh, of course, was the creator of humanity, and so in the Bible they fused Adonai, which is uh, the good God that does all the nice things for humanity, including uh, giving us life. We know that's by uh, engineering our genes with erectus genes, uh, and uh, and saving humanity. All those things that that Enki did. Enki is Adonai, and all the. The, the heavy things like murdering people and drowning people and uh, hating, uh, hating and hating and hating uh, and killing and killing and killing are done by Yahweh or Enlil. And, uh, but that's jumping way ahead. I'd like to uh, go back, if we may, to what Zechariah Sitchin in his translation of the, uh, the tablets Enki left for us uh, actually wrote. All right. So where would you like me to start, honey? Right. Uh, there. With this, with yeah. Nergal or three shars? That's it. Okay. For three shars, for four shars, the instruments, the white land facing words that were observed by Nergal and Arishkakel, odd rumblings in the white land snows were recorded. So that's um, Antarctica? Uh, yeah, white land is Antarctica. A shar is 3,600 years. Okay. The snow ice that the white land covers to sliding has taken, so that they from the Absu, which is uh, Africa's tip, report. In the land beyond the seas, the Nerta in his haven foretelling instruments established. So the Nerta is watching over all this. Yeah. Yes, yes. Quakes and jitters at the earth's bottom with the instruments he noticed. An odd matter is afoot, so did Enlil to Anu, Anu Biru, words of alarm send. The king and the counselors a decision made for evacuating Earth and Lamu to prepare Lamu's Mars. 
and the Absu, the gold mines, shut down. Therefrom the Anunnaki to the Eden came. In Bad Tibera, smelting and refining ceased, all gold to Nibiru was lofted. Empty for evacuating ready, a fleet of fast celestial chariots to earth returned. On Nibiru, the heavenly signs were watched. On earth, the tremors recorded there. From one of the celestial chariots, a white-haired Anunnaki stepped off. Galzu, great knower, was his name. With steps majestic to Enlil, his way he made. To him a sealed message from Anu he presented. I am Galzu, emissary potenti plenipotential, potentiary of king and council. This is what Galzu said to Enlil. No word from Anu of that uh, had for come. Enlil was surprised, but Enlil the seal of Anu examined. Unbroken and authentic it was. That Enki and Nima be also summoned, was Galzu's request, and when they came to Nima, Galzu pleasantly smiled. Of the same school and age we are to her, he said. This Nima could not recall. The emissary was as young as a son, and she was his olden mother. Simple as the explanation, Galzu to her said, by our winter slumbered life cycles it is caused. Indeed, this matter is of my mission apart. About the evacuation, it is a secret. Ever since the Muzi on Nibiru had stayed, returning Anunnaki on Nibiru were examined were. Those who on earth the longest stayed by the returning harshly were affected. They were afflicted. Their bodies to Nibiru's cycles were accustomed no longer. Their sleep was disturbed. Their eyesight was failing. The net force, force of Nibiru waited their walk. Their minds were also affected, as sons were older than the parents they had left. Death, my comrades, to the returnees quickly came. Of that I am here a warning to give. The three lead leaders on earth, the longest by the words, silent became. Nima was the first to speak. That much was to be expected, she was saying. Enki, the wise one, to her words consented. That much was clear, he said. Enlil with anger was seized. Before the earthlings like us were becoming, now we as earthlings have become to this planet imprisoned. The whole mission is a nightmare turned by Enki and his earthlings from masters to slaves we were made. Now he's really mad. The whole mission to a nightmare turned by Enki and his earthlings from masters and slaves we were made. So he's blaming this um, <laughs> this cycle that uh, made them imprisoned on Earth on Enki. So that was very interesting. Yep. Yeah. To the outburst, Galzu with compassion listened. Indeed, much there is to ponder, he said. On Nibiru, much thinking and soul-searching deep questions were raising. Should Nibiru to its fate been left, whatever by the creator of all intended to be let to happen? Or was the coming to earth by the creator of all conceived, and we only unwitting emissaries? Of that, my comrades, the debate will continue. So was Galzu to them saying. Why was he right? <laughs> well, let's just comment on that for a second. That's, a, that's heavy. So what they were seeing is that basically the creator of all, you know, the highest god of the gods, uh, the oneness, had this... Um, mission which was to create humanity that's right the, the what uh, the, the anunnaki you'll see more and more they come to realize it that the uh, prime creator deliberately put them down on earth to rescue the inhabitants of earth from earlier disasters the other humanoids the wonderful genes of the erectus the compassionate creature to resurrect those genes and put them with the great uh, knowledgeable genes of the Anunnaki and put them together and this was all what they will wind up reflecting part of uh, the will of the creator of all. Now that's very heavy, that's, that's heavy, if you go to that level of um, 
creation, the creation story. It's quite profound, you know. It's just, I mean, I was raised Christian, so I, I got the whole story. Anyway, back to the book. Now, this is the secret command from Nibiru. The three of you on Earth will remain only to die to Nibiru. You will return. In celestial chariots, the Earth encircling the calamity you shall outweigh. To each of the other Anunnaki, a choice to leave or the calamity outweigh must be given. The E.G. who earthlings espouse must be between departure and spouses choose. No earthlings, Marduk, Sarum, Marduk, Sarum, Sar Sarpanet. Sarpanet, sorry. No earthling, Marduk, Sarpanet included. To Nibiru to journey is allowed. For all who stay and what happens see in celestial chariots, a safety must seek. For all the others to depart for Nibiru forthwith, they ready must be. So did Galzu Nibiru's commands to leaders in secret reveal. But let me let me just add before you go to the next thing. Um, weren't they? Uh, they somehow there's the peaks. They went to the peaks. Yeah. Okay. Remember back. Let's well. Let's go back to where he, he's even saying that. Uh, okay, that's okay. We, we'll that they to... they should seek high ground. I think we already read that. That's yes. It. Okay. So you take the next part. Now this is the account of how the Anunnaki to abandon Earth decided, and how an oath they took. Mankind to let in the deluge perish. In Nibiru key, that's uh, Enlil's uh, capital, Enlil a council of Anunnaki and astronaut commanders summoned. The leaders' sons and their children were also present. Word of the impending calamity, Enlil to them a secret revealed. To a bitter end, Earth mission has come. That's what he said to them. All who wish to leave, Will, uh, the celestial boats are ready to take you to uh, Nibiru. But if earthling spouses you have, without the spouses you must leave. And those uh, astronauts who to their spouses and offsprings attached are, let them to the highest peaks on Earth escape. Okay. As for a few of us Anunnaki who will choose to stay in boats of heaven in Earth's skies, rocket ships, we will return the calamity to outweigh the fate of Earth to witness. As the commander, I shall be the first one to stay, so was Enlil staying. And by their own choice, so will the others. With my father, I choose to stay. The calamity to face, so did Ninurta announce. And so Ninurta is um, Enlil's, Enlil's son, son his and champion. And Nimba's son. To the lands beyond the oceans, after the deluge, I will return. What, where's that, honey? The lands beyond the oceans. America. Okay. Nanar, Enlil's on Earth first, Enlil's first born on Earth, an odd wish announced. The deluge to outweigh, not on Earth's guys, but on the moon. That was his wish, so he's the man in the moon. Enki, an eyebrow raised, Enlil, though puzzled, approved. Ishkar, Enlil's youngest, to remain on Earth with his father, his decision made. Ishkar is also known as Adad. Adad. Utu and Anana, Nanar's children who on Earth were born, to stay, declared. Enki and Ninki, to stay, and Earth not abandoned, choose. Proudly, they so announced. The Ijiji and Sarpanet, I shall not desert, Marduk with anger stated. One by one, Enki's other sons, their choice to stay announced. Nergal and Gibel, Ninigal and Ningashida and Damuzi too. All eyes to Nimma, they then turned. With pride, her choice to stay, she declared. My life work is here. The earthlings, my created, I shall not abandon. By her words, Anunnaki and Ajiji to a clamor were stirred. About the earthlings' fate, they inquired. Let the earthlings for the abominations perish, so did Enlil proclaim. A wondrous being by us was created, by us saved it must be, Enki to Enlil shouted. To this Enlil with his own shouted words retorted, From the very beginning, at every turn, the decisions by you modified were, to primitive workers procreating you gave, to them knowing you endowed, the powers of the creator of all into your hands you've taken, uh, thereafter even that, by abominations you fouled, with fornication a dapper you conceived, understanding to his line, 
knowledge you gave them. His offspring to the heavens you have taken. They, they, 